hi everyone welcome back welcome to the advanced topics of swelt kit and in this video we are going to explore couple of uh, topics with some good demo examples let's say the swelt kit forms use enhance how to use the store with the swelt kit uh, and how to do the api integration uh, from the server side uh, components let's say you are writing a simple form you submit the form to the server component and then from the server component how you can make an actual api call to external apis get the data and then populate that data back into your swelt store and then uh, session management using cookies and gwt token and how you manage the session in the swelt kit uh, side okay so let's see this is a simple form we are going to talk about first uh, example is how we write the forms and how we can use jord for the form validation so this is a simple registry schema i'm going to go through this example because this is simple and real quick here th let's say this is a simple form i will just close all these uh, boxes and here this is a simple form and what we are doing in this form is we are just doing a method post right so what will happen is it is going to hit the default action and the default action we have defined in the page.server.ts this is the default action and we have the event object and from the event object we can extract what you are submitting to the form right like username password email uh, course a student id or whatever and then you can use jord jord is a library npm module that can be used to validate a json object a simple json object let's say uh, you are getting a json object anywhere either from the one service to another service from client side to the server side server side you got an object and now you want to validate that object that that object contains the student id as a number student name as a string with a particular length password should follow the some regex pattern all those validations email should be a proper email regex all these validations can be done through the schema so here you specify a schema and all the validations on the name string minimum one name is required maximum 64 here we can just make it a little more eight and password minimum eight right and the password confirm same validation criteria same you can do for the email right here you can see these are the inbuilt methods available and when you are when these criteria are not satisfied it will throw these messages these are the custom messages email must be a valid email address if the max length is not satisfied mill length is not satisfied if the you are not passing email as a string you just pass the some number so email is required these are the custom messages okay and uh, terms it should be a required error and it should be a enum either on and off and then you can validate it so this is a schema object and on the schema object you can just say super refine or safe uh, validate or there are some methods i think safe parse safe parse async right what these will do is these will validate your payload first of all and then it is giving you whatever the output json object i mean it will validate if there is an error it will return the error otherwise it will give you the same payload object and you can just do some more validations if uh, there are still some issues like password comparison old password i mean the current password and uh, retype password should be same then you can manually populate some more errors in the context so it's like really powerful uh, library to do the validation there are other libraries also like jup i know jord i know so these are some of the libraries which are used for the payload validation yup is used with react and other uh, forms reactive forms for make jord is just a simple independent library to validate a payload validate a json object now that json object can be anywhere in the forms in the client server communication any kind and here in the default action first we will get all the properties in the form data once we get all the properties we can validate it first of all we will just do is register schema dot parse we have we will just do the parse right and once you do the parse you are just passing this json object if result is okay then it will return it otherwise they, it will go inside errors let's say if you are not satisfying any particular criteria then you will get all the form data and the errors so it will be uh, we first we have to flatten the errors because the errors are all nested so if you just try to see what we are getting inside error if we are not set fulfilling a criteria then we can see that uh, 
right this is kind of error object you received a very big one right so what we are going to do is here inside these errors object we will just flat all of these and then we will capture all the messages this is what we are doing we flatten all of these and we got the field errors and then field errors are assigned as an errors so you can see these are errors we have received errors or issues so this is your jod error these are the field errors and you will capture all of these together and you will return that in the errors object so if we just see we are getting inside errors also we can see after doing flatten because this error object we are returning to front end let's remove console.log for now okay you can see it's a really nice representation of validation name email password and this object this object we are returning from here errors and data is whatever the data you have passed obviously data is the whatever you have submitted to the server same i'm returning so data and errors now with these two things i can do anything i can just do some show some messages on the front end and can show if uh, the form dot data is there because if it is getting success then success is like this if you will just get the result so we can just update our form and we can just do these uh, assertions like okay form dot errors are there that means form dot errors dot name is there change the class and form dot data dot name i mean value will be whatever you typed is coming back form dot errors dot name is there then just print the form dot error dot name dot uh, first index of name property form dot errors this object dot name and zeroth index name is required right so if form dot errors dot name is there then just get the zeroth index similarly if form dot um email errors dot email is there get the zeroth index so it's really nice and clean way of doing validation there are other libraries are also available in the swell kit now at the client side or server side server side validation is you will do jord yap or something at client side also before even submitting the form we can write a event handler here like on submit you can add an event handler uh, or use enhance before even submitting the form first validate the payload here and then only send the data to the server there are many ways of doing it but the form actions are really powerful because you can you are doing things at the server side so you are you know you are not worried about client side javascript in that case okay so form dot data dot email similarly same property if form dot errors dot password is there that means there is some error show it now let's say I'm entering things. Okay. Com. Step terms and conditions. So it is submitted. Now what payload we are getting in the success? We are getting this same JSON object in the return, but not the errors object, right? If there is no errors object, then we are good. Our form is valid. We are just getting only this data from this result set. Right? We are just printing it. I mean, we, we don't even need to return anything. This form object we are getting because this is a form object which this uh, actions are returning. This is the, the page data, you can say. And from the form dot uh, data, nothing. No error, right? So that is being received and you, you are doing the form validation. So let's talk about other uh, concept also here. Uh, let's say the page uh let me write any other let's say the movie here we are writing the page server dot js or page server dot ts whatever let's say js function right so the load function does exactly what it sounds like it loads the data into the components it is exporting this data and it is putting this data inside this component and here we are getting this load function data load functions can be of server side and shared server shared means it can be a client side it can be a server side or only server side because load function you can also define in the page.ts so we have anywhere like page.js it's if you are putting a load function this runs on both server side and the client side and whatever you are putting inside page.server.ts it runs only on the server side and what we are doing from this load function you can do a lot of things you are you can return a data 
you can also return some status code like this return status 302 and uh, redirect and your location of redirection right so load function can do this and whatever you are loading inside this that can be used again at the child level components let's say id and here i'm just doing a plus page dot svelte and i'm doing plus page dot ts i mean you do, we don't need a load function here whatever the data is available in this page dot felt same data you can capture at the child level component also it's a bit right so the data gets inherited accessing the load function data from the component components this is how we are accessing but you can also do the data inheritance that means whatever the data available uh, was exported through this page server dot ts and available here that is also available in the child component so if i talk about some hierarchy then you might understand it better let's say the pokemon here inside page dot swelled or page dot ts i'm exporting some data that is available at the pokemon level inside slug inside this page dot swelled also we can ex access the same data like same as used in page options export data let export data if you are, haven't defined any load function at that component level so this is how the a child route will inherit all its parent route load function data also if you have a layout load function all the child route will inherit the data from there also let's say we have a layout layout dot svelte we don't have a load function here like let's say i create a plus layout dot ts function here and i create a load function here which is doing nothing but returning some data to me right let's say terminator this data can be accessed throughout the all the children's of this layout okay so another thing is we talked about uh, how we are doing with the hooks like uh, how the hooks really works we also discussed about it like hooks are used to check the sessions if session exists then it doesn't it will either redirect you or it will just resolve it and hooks we create inside src and how we do it is hook.server.ts i guess hooks.server.ts and the basic syntax for this is simple resolve right so this is the event and this is resolve so what we are doing here is through the events we can do we can check a lot of things we can actually check the particular url we can check the cookies we can do a lot of uh, stuff here through the event object we can access the cookies like event dot cookies dot get here you will get the cookie name and what you can actually do once you get the cookie name because this hook dot server dot ts will execute on every page load and this is going to run only at the server side so you can also do the data validation here so i mean the handle hook is something which we really use in svelte kit application it's core the handle hook act like an interceptor for all the requests that are made to your application so it's important it's like an interceptor and it just resolve the request to a response and return it to the uh, other part of the application so let's say you read the cookies and you will resolve this event so this event will be available to your load function to your form actions everywhere so it is a server side hook this is how we are defining inside source and the default behavior is if uh, all the checks passed you will just resolve it otherwise if you say is cookie is not there you will redirect it all those stuff you will do let's say uh, what we are doing here is redirect we need to get from svelte it let's say if you get the auth token if auth token is not there you can redirect from here or you can actually customize the response so what you can do is let's say th these are the the different use cases you get the response object and now on the response object you can customize the some particular header 
response dot set header and content type also so because every route will hit this this is an interceptor and this response you can change the the behavior of the response you can append the header once you intercept it so you can also use the locals that we have already done and this is really a fun i mean interesting part of this is uh, once the event once the because we want to validate only admin routes let's say so what i'm doing is a simple code like snippet to understand it i'm checking auth token is there inside the cookies and only for the admin routes if the event.url.path name starts with admin only admin routes then only it will execute i'm checking auth token no if no auth token redirect to login otherwise validate the auth token if you got the user and this is server side so you can write a code to validate the user object and all and then once you get the user object you can set the locales this is important part when you are setting the locales this locales you can access throughout your application because you are setting it inside events so whatever you are putting inside events can be accessed inside your load functions can be inside a form actions everywhere you can access it and inside your load function somewhere let's say movies page server dot ts let's say here i'm creating plus page dot server dot ts what we will do we can access the user id here that will tell us okay user is logged in and do whatever you want to do okay that's it in the just a basic my whole plan is to cover up the concepts of a swell kit and then do the admin dashboard in the swell kit